Hi friends, uh, people, uh, especially new subscribers. I've clicked on quite a lot of them to look at your channels. There's a couple of no content ones, but there's also some really um, interesting ones. So I'll look forward to looking at a little bit more of what you're doing and there's some great stuff going on there. I feel a bit humbled because I withdrew a little bit from being, for whatever reasons, you know, for whatever reasons, I worked really, really hard on the Hampstead case for over three years, and then I bunkered down and withdrew a little bit. So there's incredible stuff that I've missed and work that people are doing and research that I'm not up to date with, so I don't apologize, but like I'm catching up. Um, sorry about the mess. I've tried to broadcast more and not, not be hooked up on everything's got to be perfect. So, you know, it's just life's not like that. Um, the, I wanted to share just a few little things uh, about Tommy Robinson, um, indirectly loosely about Jill Dando, about Jimmy Savile. I'm not, I don't want to keep harping on about, I wish I was going to, <laughs> don't want to keep harping on about trolls, but I'm going to try and use what the devil means for harm, God turns to good. I'm going to try and use the stupid things they throw up and some of the valid questions they throw up. I'm going to try and use them just to, you know, why not? Why not turn the tables on them? Because you'll almost always find, almost always, not always, but you'll almost always find they are paedophile protectors or somebody with an investment in keeping a lid on, particularly, I would say, in um, the really dark side of child abuse. I'm talking Ian Watkins kind of stuff. I'm talking infants children, toddlers, um, that kind of stuff. So I do suspect that, um, I, I saw a quote, I don't know whose it was, it said something like, um, if you want to control the opposition, <laughs> if you want to control the opposition, lead it. So I do feel that the, for instance, the Me Too um, movement, valid as it is and powerful as it is, but I think it's been, controlled release to avoid Ruby to avoid the subject of oh, that's my son, my boy, one of my boys, um, to avoid the subject of child abuse, child sexual abuse and child sexual abuse, the big taboo, the big taboo. Um, similarly, although I've got a lot of research and a lot of um, reason to agree with some of the stuff that Tommy Robinson says, and Agenda 21, Agenda 30, breaking down society and its identity and so on. But I also suspect a bigger agenda with regard to exposing Muslim grooming gangs, which are a huge problem and absolutely ran rampant for decades. But I do suspect there's an agenda to expose them and keep the elite paedophile rings under wraps, so I'm talking, you know, most of the survivors, and I'm a survivor, but most of the survivors I've engaged with uh, were abused by judges, MPs, chief constables, people running children's homes, uh, intellectuals, uh, the elite, the elite. Um, so with regard to Tommy Robinson, we, we haven't researched very much, I, my heart hurt seeing him, you know, 40 pounds lighter and traumatized from uh, solitary and the fear of being poisoned or murdered. Or, you know, he's got children, he's a dad, uh, you know, so I haven't really followed it closely. I've also, I have had suspicions like Alex Jones gave him a hundred grand to get started. And, um, but the, the video I watched today, although I don't agree with all of it, but it had an actual filmed, recorded meeting between Tommy Robinson and an aspiring Muslim MP. And the Mu aspiring Muslim MP was saying, right, you help me get elected and I'll be, I'll fight your corner. And so here's the plan. I want you to schedule three marches and, you know, the first one will go ahead, the second one will go ahead, 
but then we'll announce that we've cancelled the 3rd March because we went down the route of negotiation. So you can say you've met with me, you've met with the chief constable, you've met with community leaders, and you've found a solution. That way, you know, we'll, we'll show people a different way forward and I'll make sure I look after you. And even more worryingly, the guy says, if you need a few assistants, you know, we'll give them a small wage, but we can't be seen to do that because, you know, you can't, you know, when you're lobbying or campaigning to get elected, you can't be seen to blackmail people. And Tommy on camera agrees a deal with the guy where he says, yeah, 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 well, so I'll give him a small wage and then you'll sort me out, right? And the guy's like, yeah, yeah, of course, but better if we speak about this stuff face to face. I don't know who recorded that. I don't know who leaked it, but I'm going to screen share and show you who shared it. Although, as I say, I don't agree with everything that Guidance 222 says. Yeah, 2222. Um, says, but he's done some great work. He's done some great work. Even though he's, he's like thrown suspicions at me the odd time. You know, if people didn't know, move that over there, let's minimize that, let's close that. Right, if people didn't know my background, which I'm going to deal with, I'm going to, I'm doing a Google Live Hangout Tuesday, and I've been invited by a big American platform to do a series with them. So I'm going to, put my background out there for the sake of otherwise I might as well quit campaigning because I'm so badly trolled it's like it's a waste of time unless I actually lay my cards out on the table about who I am and why why I'm passionate in this area so I'll just show you this um video <clears throat> all right YouTube Let's just go Webex, we don't need that right now. Uh, let's go. I'll actually subscribe to this guy. Guidance. Doo, 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 doo. And I'll show you where this video is with footage, which, you know, it's, it, it, it's pretty shocking. So, Westminster, he's got some good stuff, I tell you. Uh, Westminster Child Abuse High Level, Child Abuse Room Exposed. Vice President Jimmy Blow, come on, where have these go videos? Here we go. Now it looks like he's done, oh, he's done a few. Alternate media and paedophiles linked. Tommy Robertson, Governor Eddie. Well, this is the one I watched this morning. What I'm saying is, it's the one I watched this morning. And like I said, I don't agree with him on everything, but evidence is, although it's hard to find with, um, the subject of child abuse is showing that video. Oh, well, there's another video people should watch, which is the Word interview with East, East 17, um, where their manager, Tom Watson, boasts that he slept with all the band, you know, before he made them big. Um, so, it, it, you know, that it, horrible, horrible man. So I'll show you where that is as well, perhaps, or you can see it in here. Um, Millie Hoax Riddle, um, that's Millie Dowler's mother, and as I say, I didn't know a lot about that. Maybe it's way back at the beginning. Anyway, I'm just recommending you go check out Guidance 2222, although he seems quite, he's, he's a bit naughty with Eddie is okay, and he's casting aspersions on Red Pill Phil. Um, but the part that I want you to look at is where Tommy sits down with a Muslim, I think this is it, with a Muslim um, would-be elected official who, who says, look, I'll do a deal with you. Britain first of announced one in Dudley, went for. Yeah, let me just check my, let me just check my email, I'm not going to email you, I'm just received it, let me just see what it says. What uh, what's being proposed to you is that uh, you, uh, you you 
you hire them. Okay. And then we'll work out you know, uh, what contribution, if any, they can make directly to our campaign and what they can do directly for you. But let's talk about that face to face. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Then cool. No problem. Yeah, because we obviously can't hire people in that way because that would be uh, against election rules, and we don't want to break rules. That's okay. So what? So yeah. I'll pay them, and then we'll sort something out between me and you. Yeah. Of course. Of course. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. No problem. Okay. Right. So that's that, which is a bit disappointing. Um. And then the Word interview, quite a few people have shown the Word interview with these 17. Where's that? I suppose we could look at history. I never really can see what I've been watching. Watch history. My heart, yeah, that's the one I watched. Exclude Tommy Speaks. I don't know. Oh, that's my children playing music while they helped with that as well. <laughs> so we'll just skip Nirvana. Human farming, blah blah. Uh, the Finders that was a brilliant interview with Ed Opperman and a guy that's been researching the Finders. And I just left a comment because when I was working on the Hapsed case and um, an American YouTuber uh, came forward to travel to London and do a documentary. One of the things that was thrown up was that he came from a place called Culpepper, where there was a finder's um, home, whatever. And um, he said that, that, that it was the other far side of the town. And, you know, there was talk around the town about these weird people with children that nobody knew much about. But he also did talk about that in the Methodist church he was raised in, they did a program, the youth group did a program for shut-ins so um that i presume shut-ins are elderly people that can't get to the shops or single parents without a car i don't know i don't know but but interestingly in that ed opperman interview about the finders um the guy talked about a, a church having its prayer breakfasts in the finders home that's really worth interview uh, reviewing Diligent Rascal, I looked at that. Um, G.I.D. and Altars, Ninja Warrior. Um, the Red Pill, right, I haven't looked at all of these, I've checked in on some of them. No, I'm not seeing, I shared it, the best place to find, um, to track with me, for those who want to, you know, everybody's different. I'm, like I said, I'm 61, so everybody's demographic is different. I just think the more of us that are speaking out, the better. Um, so I'll stop screen share at that point. Oh no, I could show you on Facebook. I don't really, because at the moment I'm on my backup Facebook, which is more to do with family and close friends. So, um, you know, I'm an open book, but I'm not open to having my children and close friends targeted. That's that's not cool. Um, so yeah, there is a there is if you if you check my Facebook page, even Angela Power Disney, I managed to post on, but you have to go to the page to see what I post. And um, I think I've got my backup channel on Friends Only, but there is a video out of an interview of E17 way back way i think when they were early signed or uh, you know an interview on the word and it's pretty shocking um so yeah that i don't know what to say about that tommy robinson thing and and it's like every day is a bit shocking at the moment even for those seasoned or thought they were seasoned in this research the other thing i just wanted to get jump on about is Jill Dando because it was brought up by a troll and I got a uh, you know these friend requests um, new message requests and I'm wondering if this is just a I never know if it's genuine people or trolls and I'm sorry if there are genuine people that I do decline particularly on my backup channel which like I said I keep very small <laughs> So I'll just read you the request without giving you the name. Hi, Angela. I'm looking for a second opinion over curiosities regarding my estranged grandfather and Jimmy Savile and some synchronicities regarding the Jill Dando case. 
would you mind if I laid out the basics to give me a second opinion? I've messaged most related to the case journalists, a mistake on my part as I've had no reply. Now I'm going to take a chance, having read that on air, I'm going to take a chance and accept that, but I'm not a related to the case journalist. Um, you know, the trolling, oh, okay, that's interesting. Should I message Christine Hart as she seemed like a good person and she gave me your name? Well, thanks, Chris. And I really hope we can build some bridges. Do you know what I mean? I know you're a survivor and, I, and you don't deserve the childhood yet, no more than I do. So I'm sure we can build bridges. Um, so Jill Dando, uh, I will go back to screen share. I don't even know the exact year she died. Um, I was asked, there was somebody made, I'll just give you timeline, brief timeline. So in 76, I moved to London at 18 and I worked in, first of all in Jewish Savile Row type shop. And then it, after six weeks I left there and then I got a job at Bank of Credit and Commerce International in Knightsbridge. I worked there from about March, 76 to October, maybe September 78. Then I went to university at Warwick, which yes, I know is not in Warwick. It's between Warwick and Coventry. I lived in Crackley Cottages, which is about 1.4 miles from the campus. You know, little workman's cottages, drive along, turn left, there's your campus, don't talk. Just stop with the ridiculous trolling shit, stupid stuff. There's plenty of stuff you can ask me about, which is worthy of an answer. So don't be saying stupid stuff. So so then I, I moved to London in 76. I got a flat in the Water Gardens in W2, and I kept that flat until 82. So six years, yeah, 82, yeah, six years. And then I lived longer there, actually. I, I, I sold the lease on the on the flat in the water gardens for key money and then I spent some time living in Brixton um, and Herne Hill. Yeah, when I first moved to London I lived in West Croydon and then Putney and then got my flat in the water gardens. So that's another story but that's just a timeline. So then um, from 78 to 81 even though I kept my flat in London I rented it out to a couple of friends and I went to university at Warwick and I used to come back to London every Christmas, summer, Easter. I, I basically worked my own way through university um, as a mature student because I was 21. I, you know, because I left school at 18, worked in London for three years, then went to university. So I got a mature student grant, but I didn't have any contributions from the family. So I worked every holidays. Um, and then in 82, I went and lived in Marbella. And then 83, I think I was still in London. 84, I spent a little time in Ireland. And 85, I moved to California for five years. So let's have a look when Jill Dando died. I'm aware of it, of course I am. And I have, everyone goes to our screen. Basic. Um, I had somebody ask me to participate in a, a documentary they made about her death. Stuart, S-T-E, can't remember his last name. Um, but he wanted me to talk about Hampstead in his Jill Dando documentary. Jill Dando, the murder of Jill Dando. Right, let's have a look at Wikipedia. Jill Dando. So 1999 was when she was murdered. Where was I in 99? Right, stop share. Oh, where was I in 99? 2000, I was in Ireland. My boy, my youngest was born at Cavan General Hospital in 97. So I was in Ireland in 99. Um, so the only thing I've got in common with Jill Dando is she went to Cardiff for journalism college or school and I, I was offered a place there after O-levels, after GCSEs and I 
turned it down in favour of staying on to do A-levels. I didn't know I was going to go to university at that point, but uh, so she was, she went there. And the only other thing I have in common is that S.T.E. Matthew, a guy that made a documentary about Jill Dando being killed as he believed uh, because she was going to expose paedophilia in the BBC and beyond, asked me, would I, would I, you know, I think he asked me to edit or like listen to it or I don't know if he was going to, but it never, ha I did a bit of editing for it, like a, just a little bit of editing for him. I never got more involved in that. And the, and the, and I thought he did a good job. Stuart Matthew Murray, something like, something like that. Anyway, I thought he did a good documentary. Um, and then Richard D. Hall came out with a three or four part documentary about his theory about why Jill Dando was murdered. He was saying, well, everybody knows she was murdered. So Richard D. Hall, it's worth checking out both those documentaries. If, if the Jill Dando case interests you, I've researched it, but I don't, like I said, I was, I had, a, had three children by then and, um, I was living in Ireland, so I'm, I'm not closely involved with that case at all. It's also thrown up about Cliff Richard. I, I know nothing about, I, I know what I believe. I know what I suspect. I know what many survivors have said. I know that um, just because uh, there wasn't enough evidence, allegedly, to prosecute him does not mean he's not guilty. Um, you know, suing the BBC, I'm pretty sure the police would not have tipped the BBC off without shed loads of evidence. They would not have been that stupid, I don't believe. Unless it was, who knows, who knows, or I don't try and get in their heads. So yeah, nothing, uh, nothing about Cliff Richard, except I've always had a sort of, <laughs> you know, and I, I do, you know, I have heard testimonies and from survivors, but uh, I'm gonna try and stick to facts, you know, for now so yeah i know little i know nothing really other than what i've researched and what survivors have said about cliff richard and i know nothing about jill dando other than what i've researched and the two documentaries you know with different angles one one saying you know she was murdered for trying to expose pedophilia and one saying it was richard d hall has a different theory i did watch the whole thing and i just was on the fence it was pretty convincing it was something to do with, I'll tell you what it was, his theory, which he had some pretty convincing evidence for. His theory was that the guy that, the nail bomb attacker in London, again, like I, I kind of pretty much left London full time, 85, but the guy, the nail bomb attacker, um, they already knew about and they didn't, they didn't intervene in time and so, the second nail bomb that went off and people, I think people died, was a real blunder on the part of the intelligence services because they had all the intel. So check the two out and judge for yourself, but that's, that's just that. And, and just, <laughs> you know, wherever I, I'm, I'm, wherever the trolls go, they, like they, it's just ridiculous. But they're trying to say now I was responsible for Brian Harvey's downfall. Give me a break. Give me a break. But anyway, not to worry, moving swiftly along. I think that's all I want to address today because I kind of uh, got stuff, lists of my own stuff to keep working on. And I um, certainly don't want to be accused of jumping on somebody else's bandwagon. I just think when the momentum's there, on a certain case, it's an opportunity for survivors everywhere to um, pull together, you know, and um, keep speaking the truth. So that's what I'm trying to do. Angela's Cashes.org, Angela Power Disney on Facebook when I'm not banned. God bless. Right.